to Rating the List, where we review, discuss, and reimagine popular movie lists objectively. We're your hosts, I'm Jerry. And I'm Brad. And on this episode, we'll be exploring number 60 from AFI's 100 Years, 100 Passions, the 100 Greatest Love Stories of All Time. Number 60 is To Have and Have Not, directed by Howard Hawks, released in 1944, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. And the synopsis for this romantic war drama is as follows. In the summer of 1940, world-weary Captain Harry Morgan, played by Humphrey Bogart, operates a sport fishing boat in Martinique, crewed by his alcoholic buddy, Eddie. The island is a tinderbox of dissent, with many people sympathetic to free France. Morgan stays at a hotel owned by Gerard and encounters many characters in the lobby bar, including recent arrival Marie Browning, played by Lauren McCall. Harry spots her stealing the wallet of his client and convinces her to return it. While apologizing, a shootout breaks out and the client is killed before he can pay Morgan what he's owed. The police question Harry and Marie and confiscate his money and passport. Penniless, Harry agrees to assist transporting a couple of French Resistance members from a small inlet to Martinique. All the while, attraction grows between Harry and Marie. She believes he is falling for her, but is taken aback when he uses the bulk of his money to buy her transport back to America. On the transport mission, one of the Resistance members is shot in a fight with a German patrol boat. Harry returns to the hotel and finds Marie hasn't left, choosing to stay with him. Harry is further drawn into the resistance when he has to remove the bullet. The police show up at the hotel to see Harry, who they know helped the the resistance. They reveal they have Eddie in custody and are withholding liquor from him to get him to talk. Harry turns the tables and kills an officer and detains the others. He forces them to release Eddie and issue harbor passes. He, Marie, and Eddie head off together to the boat. All right. Um, I feel like Humphrey Bogart, like, he kind of plays the same dude. He kind of owns this role, yeah. He kind of owns it. Like, he's, like, super smooth and, like... Yeah, this guy could be, uh, honestly, it could be Sam from Casablanca. It's it's yeah, essentially the it's same character. it's the same character. Um, not that that's a bad thing. Like, he's still really good. Yeah. Um, except his... His jeans bothered me. Yeah, his yeah, he, fishing jeans. His, his fishing jeans look like mom jeans. They were total mom <laughs> jeans. Um, but, uh, yeah, so his character was good. He was super smooth. He kind of had, like, he was one of the regs. And he, yeah, like, you he, know. He's, you know, he's an American. He's, he's working in Martinique. And he has been there long enough to understand the political situation how to steer clear of both sides of it. Like, he's obviously sympathetic to the resistance, but he doesn't want to piss off the Vichy who are in charge. So he, you know, he just he just walks the line and he just kind of puts his head down and does his he's job. He's just, just trying to make money. He's just trying to, to make a living, you know, taking guys out for marlin hunting and things like that. Mm-hmm. And he's just, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to get involved. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lauren Bacall. She's a smoke show. Right? Huh? And she kind of, like, she... I don't know if she invented resting bitch face, but she... She has a serious resting bitch face. She has, like, the world's best resting bitch face. Like, you have no idea what's going on in that woman's mind. Like, it's just, it's, like, perfect. Like, for someone who's 20 years old to be able to pull that off. Yeah, then, and she's, like, super cool about everything, and she's got this deep voice, like, this really mm. deep elderly voice really yeah and it's like she's super sexy and gorgeous and um she you know she's 20 years old in this movie and she does a really good job she holds her own against humphrey bogart i guess like they're they were an item so they uh they started an affair Mm. um during this movie and then shortly after that um i think he was married at the time and i think after that he divorced, and they were married then until he died. Wow. So they were together for a very long time. Wow. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, they had mad chemistry in this yeah. movie, like, off the charts. Yeah. Um, a lot of chemistry. A lot of chemistry between the whole Yeah, it's a really, uh, it's a really well-cast cast movie. Yeah. Real, a lot of chemistry between all of them. Um, 
it lost me a little bit at times. It was a little slow, but I, other than that, it was, it was a great story. The thing I like the most about it is I like when a movie trusts the audience to understand what's going on. Like, you don't have to have a, you know, a, you know, a history degree. You don't have to have studied World War II to understand precisely what's going on here. I mean, one of the things, you know, you have to, this is a, you know, this is a Hemingway story, so... Yeah, written you, by... It was a novel written by Ernest Hemingway. So, you know, it's going to take place on the water, most likely. There's going to be some, you know, medical stuff involved. It's going to deal with a war. It's going to deal with man stuff. <laughs> it's going to deal with, you know, man versus nature. Or, Money. Or man versus the system. I mean, that's just kind of, you know, he's got... That's his bag. He's got some themes that he worked with quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So um, we see them all in this one. This is not a book of his that I'd, I'd written or I'd read, so... You, uh, you wrote it? I did. I was, <laughs> I was just... I was this ghost writer. Yeah. No, people, people, people won't realize that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a it's a good movie. Um, really, uh, what I liked too about it was that they had people in the movie that that looked like people yeah. who lived there. You know, right. there's people of color. Yeah. Throughout you, the film, you get, you know, like if you've ever been to the Caribbean, you tend to see that kind of diversity and you know status and stuff like that. You know the the people with you know the dark skin tend to work the lower level jobs. The people with the lighter skin tend to be the owners of the land and mm-hmm. you know all of that kind of stuff. And you know this one happens to be a French colony. They're you know. There are British colonies all you know all over the Caribbean. It, it kind of plays out that way. Um, like I said, they you just kind of get dropped into it. You realize that you know there is you know a fight. A lot for, of tension. There's a lot of tension, tension on the island. You don't need to know about the you know the political you know situation in France in 1940 to no. understand exactly what's going on because that kind of thing is kind of evergreen. It plays like whatever time period you drop a movie in, you're gonna have one side who's you know fighting the status quo because they feel it you know doesn't represent their their issues. You're gonna have another side who's trying to keep their power. Doesn't it all sound like you know 2022 America at all, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Doesn't sound like it at all. History does repeat itself a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I really dug that aspect of it. Um, there are some really, really well-directed sequences in this. Howard Hawks is, you know, a, a, a Hollywood legend. And, like, there's the sequence um, when they have the shootout. Mm-hmm. The way that whole thing is blocked that was really is good. so good. Yeah, It looks fantastic. And, you know, just the way all the shots were blocked, the camera work there. Um, you know, you... you you have some issues, you know, because of, you know, the technology at the time and that kind of thing. The stuff on the boat looks a little fake. Like, you could tell they're not really on yeah, the water. He, he, yeah, and, or, you know, the, the Marlin footage is, like, totally, like, stock footage from, <laughs> like, someone, like, you know... Some tourist some, reel. <laughs> yeah, some tourist <laughs> reel that got, like, cut into the film. Yeah. But, um, other than I mean it doesn't detract you from the story it's just it it's just one of those things when you watch a movie that is one of those things where you have to accept it being of its time yeah for sure for sure when, you, when you're dealing with special effects and the film you know making you know techniques that were available to these directors at the time you kind of have to look at it did they do the best that they could they probably did you got you know you just kind of have to live with that and kind of I'm wondering it. if they could remake this movie today. I think you could probably could. Yeah. I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah. I mean it's a historical even even though it was shot like in 1944 by the time they shot this it was almost towards the end of World War II so you're almost getting to a point where it was even historical. Well, and in, you could the time. you could interchange the conflict. Sure, right? you, absolutely you could. Yeah. Or, I mean, you could you can move it forward into the 20th century mm-hmm. if you wanted to. I don't even think you need to do that. I mean, it is in the 20th century. I mean, it takes place in 1940, but, you know, you could do it, like, in Cuba. Yeah. Like, in the 60s. I mean, you could do a whole lot of stuff here, yeah, right? Yeah, you could. Um, but, you know, you could also just do, you know, make a, 
different adaptation of the book and mm-hmm. go back to the, the source, the source material. material. And That's true. Yeah, it's it's remakeable. True. It's good. It's a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Worth watching it just to see, like, the beginning of this, you know, historic, like, Hollywood relationship. Yeah, which, I mean, you you can see they have so much chemistry. Which, you know, it you know, you've got a much older man with, a, mm-hmm. a, you know, a, a younger woman. But you kind of look at it and you're like, you know what? It probably works because she just has a maturity level that is, go. you can see it right from the beginning. She has a maturity level that it, it extends way beyond her 20 years at that point. Yeah, it's still kind of weird, but. It, yeah, you know what? They were married for a very, very long time, yeah. so it worked for them and. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Okay. What what did we rate it? Uh, I gave this one a 70. You gave it a 74. So the list score is 72. So we both really, really like this one. Definitely a recommended watch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, if you have seen it and you would like to comment, please do so. And please like and subscribe to our channel. We'd uh, love to have you here. Um, if you'd like to chat with us in private, please do so by emailing us at reading the list at gmail.com so i think that's it yep all right so we're rating lists we'll see you later i'm jerry and i'm brad see ya bye